more emotional than I thought. This would be the normal entrance, uh, but that's been sealed. Access is now facilitated by a collapsed chimney. Um, and we essentially get in the chimney or the air intake. Uh, right, we are at uh, Wi-Fi Naval Communication Center, um, just outside Linus at uh, Scapa Flow uh, in Orkney. Uh, this building was constructed uh, later in the war to act as a communications headquarters for the home fleet of Royal Naval vessels that was stationed here uh, in Scapa Flow during the war. So a huge amount of traffic would have come through, communications traffic would have come through this building. Uh, both messages going out to the home fleet um, as well as intelligence coming in um, from various sectors. Um, oh, damn it. Oh, I hit, there are birds everywhere. Birds themselves are fine. It's just, they absolutely terrify me when they, they see me before, <laughs> before I see them. All right, that was slightly embarrassing. Um, so yeah, anyway, they, onto the, the, the structure itself and what, what is left. Um, it is, due to the importance, it is a, a protected building um, in Scotland. So um, protected building consent has gone in, I think, for some um, remediation work just to make the building a little bit more watertight. Um, and I think the plan is to, is to open it up to, uh, to visitors. Uh, as we can see, I'd sort of like poke, poke you out there, so you won't be able to hear um, terribly well from the camera that is outside the portal. Um, but stunning views over um, over Linus and uh, and the entrance to Scapa Flow, where the fleet would have come and gone from yeah, throughout the. Second World War. And in the Second World War, we're talking about the Home Fleet. Um, it was essentially renamed from the Grand Fleet during the First World War. Um, it was also based here at the Scapa Flow. So, incredible amount of naval history um, in these parts. And this building probably saw some of, the, some of the most interesting and exciting parts of the, um, of the Second World War. So there are two, two floors. Um, there are some buildings on the roof um, which, are, which are kind of inaccessible at the moment. I think they would just have been uh, watch posts and probably uh, where they would have um, sent semaphore signals or Morse signals uh, using signal lamps would have, would have gone that way. Uh, so up here would have been uh, the admin and operations side of it would have been telegraphists. Um, and I'm not sure, now this, this, is, this is where I'm not sure. It was a communication center. It wasn't a radio or wireless telegraphy station. So it's likely that um, the source of those signals, i.e. the transmitters and the masts, would have been elsewhere. Um, it was it was only here that the um, the messages and the signals were were written and devised. So we have a a switch box, possibly a possibly a, a lamp box. Well, they look like they look like some relays. So in here, so this is this is very like if anyone's been to the Western Approaches Museum in Liverpool, uh, they have they have a similar 
communications room. So in here, this would be essentially the bench level up against the wall, um, notice boards um, in front of the operators here. And there would have been operators uh, either, as I say, they may, have, they may have received messages, but not, not necessarily sent them from here. Lots of things remain, lots of fixtures and fittings. Now these, these hatches are probably where messages were passed through, to and from. It looks like I can only imagine would be original artwork. Yeah, I was I always find these these buildings fascinating just because they, they represent a, not only a different era but they they really represent a part of a part of history the the naval battles of the Second World War that we um, that we hear about it's just it's just remarkable to think that that pretty much every one of those ships visible through these portholes. Um, in fact, the message, the signal uh, for those ships to set sail may indeed have originated from this building um, before being, being passed to the fleet. The news about, about wins and losses and naval battles may also first have, have been received through here. We obviously have the toilet section of the welfare section of this of this facility, and most of the operators here would have been um, Women's Royal Naval Volunteer Service. Um, so this is this is likely to have been the the female toilets in here, and then the. The male toilets probably outside, is it with the with the urinals? It looks like there would have there would have been a an extra wall. It wasn't that the the urinals were just open to open to view. Uh, we've got this remarkable uh, little kitchenette area. So we've got a cast iron stove. Belfast sink, still with remains of electrics up in the ceiling, and indeed a kettle in brown enamel tin, which I can only imagine is, is a remnant of, of tea breaks here in the last days of the war. Now we combine the other side, which is um, the building split by this corridor, uh, not quite um, up the middle, but we have some smaller rooms here. And see, in this, it looks like this room had the had the baton for for the notice boards or the plaster board. Still got remnants of electrics. And these portals, these round windows, are really nice touch to the um, to the naval service that operated this this centre. Obviously, rather rather small windows. Um, typically, buildings like this didn't actually didn't actually have windows. But I'm not going in this room, it's, as you can see. Very flooded. Oh, yeah, quite, quite mucky. And there is a there is a firm concrete floor below us, which is reassuring. We're now at the end of the top floor, and then downstairs 
um, could have been more the utilities, as you as you may have caught or seen. When we came in, we were in the boiler room. We've got two tone, two tone paintwork, some more light switches and electrical fittings. Many unspecified rooms, of course, that I'm not not familiar with the function of. So here is one of the boilers. So a large chimney at the end. Sort of lead outside. Codex for workers' overalls, I presume. And it looks like another entrance. Presumably this now blocked up entrance would have would have served the lower floors, bringing in fuel and uh, coal, perhaps. So nice graffiti, sorry not, sorry, not graffiti, signage on the walls. A smaller, smaller boiler there that, by the looks of it, was would have been used to heat water. So then this is back into the room where we entered the facility. So there looks like some air moving equipment and air filtration. With a lot of with a lot of people working in a building where you couldn't open the windows, air filtration was really quite important. Another Belfast sink. There's that air filtration system. Now this is this is likely one of the main operations rooms of this building looking at it. So the the, the trunking or the ducting under the floor would likely have carried the communication cables and then along here. So if we see above of each station is some electrical wire, probably for a lamp, and then down below may indeed have been operators on typewriters, um, typing messages, receiving messages. Actual fact: here we have a picture. I believe these were these were put up as part of a bit of a, a bit of an art installation, a bit of a um, open the facility and let let the public ride. So here we can see the um, the women there. We can see the fittings on the wall that correspond to the lights above the work positions. I believe that photo was actually was taken here. Um, and a, you know, a reasonable reasonable condition room given it's been left open to the elements for um, for going eighty years now. Be some sort of storeroom with the, the wooden battens on the walls for, for shelves, perhaps. This was the stationery cupboard where paper and ribbon for the typewriters was kept. And more of these wonderful electrical fittings. The, the metal conduit rusted 
the ceramic um, fuse holder is still um, still intact. Like this, and if we look, if we look, and this is this is something you don't don't see very often. So we have this would have been the location of a switch, and you can see the the electricians or whoever was constructing or laying out the building has has written SW to indicate the switch was to be installed there. Uh, these are these stairs lead upstairs. So the kitchen is is just at the top of these stairs that we saw um, with the hob and the, the kettle. The switch room with fuses for the electrical circuits. Another sink and what looks like a workshop room. These are, Dan says, limited. It's called Belfast things because of the, the style um, and the design of the sink. So yeah, hopefully some some sort of workshop here. Um, quite often, facilities of this era had battery charging rooms or stations, um, as a lot of the equipment was run on batteries. Yeah, so that, that may indeed have, have been the battery charging room. So another unspecified room with probably some more sheep remains. So this is if you if you see these around these are fire extinguisher holders of the period small um, I think they were powder small fire extinguishers were um, were fitted there. It's, it's the only one I've seen here, so it's um, it's possible that that was that had some electrical equipment running. Uh, now here we have there's an, another another of those fire extinguisher mounts. Uh, another concrete room, it's at the end of the building and there is a large pit down here with lots of animal bones um, some pipes leading out there so it's possible this is, this is where some some equipment, electrical, it could be the telephone exchange uh, well, all those telephone lines came into the building and were, were distributed ar around. And same, it, it extends also into, into here. With these maybe, these may be bases for, for some of those racks or those telephone switches. Perhaps with the, with the cable coming in, coming in at the rear. So every every room certainly has a different a different feel to it. Some of them, this the smell in this room is is unusual. If you've ever been to a a Cold War museum that has old aircraft, and you get that that sort of old grease and oil smell, that's strange to what that room smells of. So this not yet, yet another specified room that I'm I'm unsure of the purpose, um, but it gives us a, a good idea of the the construction methods. So here actually we can we can see that it, it looks like this wood has has been recycled. We've got two tone paint with a nice um, a nice dark line in the middle. It's a little bit of a mishmash. Paint has gone down. Then there's some chicken wire which has been nailed to the wall and then there's the, the fiber board same with the they've done the same with the ceiling not quite sure what the purpose of the chicken wire behind the behind the board is we have two hatches likely for passing messages back and forward 
Um, although it's possible, no, I'm not. I'm not sure. No, I'm not sure if there were. No, I don't think there were canteen facilities here. I was thinking just with the with the extraction we have up in the roof. Yeah, unsure. These. Wonderful hooks, all numbered. I'm sure it would be every, everyone that worked here had their nominated hook. Here we have more of the, more of the, the, the pictures of the women that worked here. And there indeed we have the banks of telephone switches an exchange, presumably passing and connecting messages from the, from the headquarters buildings and um, from the ships to the ships, and um, possibly all the way back to to London. Here we have hook number hook number one. This is quite a quite a maze of a building. So here we have the other side of that hatch that we saw just a minute ago. Looked like a window at the top with possibly a, a sliding hatch at the bottom. It's been you can see the edge of the shelf has a copper strip. Stop getting worn away. The conduit has been has been marked during construction or assembly. Another hatch. This must really have been a hive of activity during operation. As I say, must have hundreds, thousands of messages been passed every day. Of not really of great importance. As well as I'm sure some some nifnaf and trivia. And some work must have gone into cleaning cleaning up some of these rooms and buildings. Presumably once the, once the animals were kicked out. And hopefully um, the planning consent for, uh, for listed buildings will, will allow them to clean and, and tidy and, and preserve, preserve the building for, for visitors and future generations. Right, so that is the end of this rather quick and ad hoc tour of the Wi-Fi communications building, which I'm out of. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. It was It's my second time around this building, the first time being three years ago, just as lockdown and COVID was being lifted. But it's been good to get back. Um, it's nice to see it's been it's been sealed and protected a little bit from the elements. So if you like this content, um, often not very planned, you just come along on some of the trips I take, then certainly like, comment um, and subscribe to the channel. And otherwise I will see you in the next video.